Hi everybody, welcome to another Achievement Chat here on Frontier Patriot. I am Ron Rayfield. And I am Justine Dorn. And Justine Dorn. Today we yes. have beautiful curly fries. Curly fries! Or that's a that's a ring, but where's a curly one? Ron, what are you doing? Oh, I, was, I was looking for <laughs> they're a curly. They're all curly okay, fries. Okay, they're all curly fries. Yeah. <laughs> you get the idea. Mm. Anyways, if you'd like to go see these, Please go over to our main channel, Early American, to see Justine making these curly fries. Yes. You want to talk a little bit about the curly fries? Yes. All these right. are from an American receipt, which isn't too surprising because potatoes are native to the Americas. It's from the 1820s. I think it was 1824. Publication of the Virginia Housewife, a receipt book published in Virginia in 1824. And it does not say recipe for curly fries. But reading it, I instantly thought, oh my gosh, Ron, we just found a recipe for curly fries. <laughs> and last week we did regular fries. And so while we were researching that, we found this. And so if you were interested in seeing that, please go back and watch last week's video too. Yes. So the, the, the receipt for this is vague like always. But it says peel a potato. It says peel <laughs> a potato round and round like you would peel a lemon and then fry it. Round and round. <laughs> peel a potato round and round. It doesn't say cut the potato into rounds. It says peel the potato round and round. That sounds like curly fries to me. And so I did some research. Now, whatever you do, do not Google when were curly fries invented because the first result that comes up is so wrong. What is it, it like 1920? It or says that Arby's invented oh. them, which isn't true because Arby's just took that recipe from a recipe that already had been around. So that don't even make any sense. So I actually found out that curly fries have been around since at least the 16th century. And they're a European invention, actually, even though potatoes are native to the Americas, a European invention it was brought back over here by European immigrants. And we now have curly fries. And Thomas <laughs> Jefferson loved French mm -hmm. fries. And I would imagine he had curly fries as well as yes. straight ones. And so here's an issue with a lot of historic receipts. When you go and you search, for example, when was uh, curly fries invented? The term curly fries is a 20th century invention. Mm -hmm. But before then, they still had potatoes that, by all standards, are curly fries. But the name curly fries has not been invented yet. Well, it's like last week's video. It was mm -hmm. called fried potatoes. Yeah, it was called fried potatoes. But nowadays, we call them French fries. And just mm -hmm. so everybody knows, the word receipt is what they used to refer to recipes as. Yes. Think of it like a modern day receipt. It has what you mm -hmm. bought and the quantity that you bought. And that's just the way they did it. Just a lot, of, right. a lot of new people have come and they've been asking, you know, why is she saying receipt? Why is she saying receipt? Mm -hmm. That's why. I swear there's a method of my madness sometimes. <laughs> it, the word recipe wasn't fully used until you know, maybe, maybe the 1920s, 1930s. Yeah. But even then, a lot of grandmas still, you might remember them using the word receipt, even mm -hmm. through the 1950s and 60s. Well, no chit chat. I want to try one of these. You, try you it. tried one while ago. I didn't try one. I already ate half of these because they are so good. And we've got mustard, mustard. today. Mustard. We made ketchup last week. And so this week it's mustard we're going to yes. have. Yes. Let's see here. Whoa, it's a lot of mustard. I like mustard. This is spicy mustard. We're mustard people. We love mustard. Mmm, that is good. I know, that's good. I love the crunch. And they're beautiful golden. Ron wanted them a little crunchier. Some people, they might want their fries a little softer. Who wants soggy fries? You do you. You do however you want it to be. But this man, he wanted them to be a little bit crunchier. So I just added a couple more minutes to the frying for him. You know, you said around and round like. 10 times a while ago, that 80s song. You spin me right round, baby, right round, like a record, baby, right round, round, round. Yep. I love, that, I love that song. <laughs> I like the music video. Hey, speaking of, <laughs> speaking of round and round, <laughs> there's some big news coming up this week. We might be sending another rocket up to space. So today, right. I want to talk about astronomy <laughs> back in our time period and even before <laughs> our time period. Because potatoes are the perfect food to have while talking about space. Oh yeah, but it's round like the yeah like the world. Are we just living on a giant potato? 
So mm -hmm. I have some pictures here. Let's go all the way back to, what are you doing? As soon as I pull this out, the fly goes way. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's her leather fly swatter. Yeah. That thing is mean. Especially, well, Ron knows because I've hit him with it a few times. <laughs> so <laughs> man has been obsessed with space travel for a long mm -hmm. time. And a few people have written books and painted photos on it. Uh, there's one from the mm -hmm. seventh, or yeah, the 17th century mm -hmm. and the 1600s mm -hmm. of a man on a ship flying to the moon, and that's part of a story that was written by Jonathan Wilkerson, and that was in 1640. Now, obviously, that didn't really happen. No, it was a, a what you call it, a science fiction. Yes, book. a science fiction book from when? 1640? The six, 1640. I mean, the guy looks like a pilgrim in a ship with a, mm -hmm. with a British flag on the back mm -hmm. of it and it's sailing up to the moon. That's amazing how they used what they understood back then, the technology that they understood, to try to visualize things. Even more recently, in the uh, 1830s, about 10 years in, in front of our time period that we mostly do here, mm -hmm. um, there was a newspaper article written that somebody had discovered life on the moon through their telescope. And it, it was all a farce. When was this? 1835 ish. Hmm. And like Batman today, but it's Man Bat. Man Bat. Of 1835. <laughs> Before Batman, there was Life on Man Bat. <laughs> <laughs> they should have reworded it. It would have sounded cool if it was like Batman. It just makes sense. But, anyways, in like 1835, an article was published that man bat was on the moon. It was a new life force. As you see in this picture, he's got wings and it kind of looks satanic. Mm. He's got claws and he just Yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> very dangerous, but there's like volcanoes in the background mm. and he's got his wings spread and he just looks crazy. So, yeah, but it wasn't real. It was it was made up. It was made up. Mm. Yeah, a lot of people bought into it though. Mm. They thought it was real because it was in a newspaper, which goes to say it. It's on the internet, or if it's in the paper back then, don't believe everything you see. Right. Hmm. So that, that's a more recent one. So people have been obsessed with space and the moon, our moon for that matter, as long as there's been the human race, really. I mean, look at people telling time sometimes mm -hmm. with the moon. Sometimes people took, they took the time with the sun, but some civilizations took it with the moon. Mm -hmm. Or stars. They like yeah, the stars. Yeah, stars, especially for navigating. So... Galileo in the 1600s, mm -hmm. he discovered uh, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and then 10 years later, he discovered Mercury. So that's all in the 1600s with a, you know, a very primitive telescope, which is spectacular to think about because those things are so far away. A fly just landed on my fly water. A high school scale. The irony. <gasps> it's there again. It's on top of it. It's on top of it. Just slowly spin it over and bam! Did I get it? it? Mm, no. no. <laughs> then it wasn't until 1781 that William Herschel discovered Neptune. But how about Pluto? That wasn't until the 20th century. Because it was discovered at the university that I went my freshman year, New Mexico State University. That was in the early 1900s. Yeah, it was. And then in the late 1800s, Uranus was discovered. Mm -hmm. it, it's Uranus. Uranus? It's Uranus. Okay. <laughs> Everyone says it's the other way. You know what I mean, but it's Uranus. <laughs> <laughs> they just say it wrong. <laughs> These are really good. These are really good. Okay, so fries, fried in lard, you do notice a difference. It, it tastes so much better. <laughs> way better than oil. Mm-hmm. And lard's better for you than oil. Apparently it is. Because of the way the saturated fats mm -hmm. and stuff work in. I mean, no matter what frying isn't healthy, I'm not going to sit here and be like, yeah, I see a diet of french fries and you look to be 125. <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> but they say lard is healthier for you even than butter. And it's healthier for you than certain vegetable oils are used for frying. Mm -hmm. First of all, lard is 100% natural. It doesn't have any hydrogenated oils in it. Yeah, it, lard comes from pork. And it has omega-3 in it. Lard has a lot more omega-3 in it than butter does. 
It actually has a very surprising amount of omega-3. It also has a really high smoke point. Hmm. And what that means is there are certain oils like olive oil, for example. I just burped. Where are your manners? Oh, excuse me. Your I just excuse. burped. <laughs> So olive oil, for example, has a really low smoke point compared to other frying oils. It means it burns if you get yep. it too hot. And so why is that bad? It means that it can it puts cancer-causing chemicals in the oil and therefore in your food once it passes that smoke point. I didn't know that. Yep. Huh. Ah. Yep. But wow. lard has such a high smoke point that there's a tremendously less amount of those cancer-causing chemicals in food fried with lard than in any real vegetable oil that I can think of. For now on, oh, we're using this mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's okay. You know, that's perfectly fine by me. <laughs> and lard is very, very affordable. Oh, yeah. But again, frying food is not healthy. <laughs> but it sure tastes good. But you can make it a little better than the alternative. I'm just addicted to these. I know, I'm addicted to these. There's something about these. I cannot stop eating them. Wow. I'm just going 100 miles an hour here. People are probably thinking, wow, look around and go. When I was eating these on Early American at the end of the video, I could not stop eating these. Ron was just standing in the corner of the cabin like, are you done? <laughs> There's not going to be any left for the yeah. chit chat. <laughs> Guilt tripping me. <laughs> <clears throat> I got a new mug. Yeah. This is a St. Genevieve mug. Mm -hmm. These were a birthday gift last year <laughs> from Candy to uh, me. Not really a new mug. And <laughs> Justine, because our birthdays are one month away, so mm -hmm. she gave us two mugs. But anyways, if you're interested in having a uh, Redware St. Genevieve mug. Uh, souvenir. You can get them. Yeah, souvenir. You can get them mm -hmm. from Candy's so, store. Sassafras Creek and St. Genevieve, Missouri. What it says on it, it says St. Genevieve 17... 35. They can read. 1735. One, <laughs> seven. Oh, 1735. St. Genevieve. That is when St. Gen was founded. founded. 1735, guys. That was a long time ago. It's almost yeah, it's 100 crazy. years ago. That's crazy. And, well, mm -hmm. here in 1820, it's almost yeah. 100 years ago. I know. It's, <laughs> it's really incredible. It's the oldest permanently inhabited settlement west of the Mississippi River. If you Google yeah. that, it'll come up. Why do I keep saying Google? <laughs> I don't know. What's Google? I, it's it's my uncle. He's really smart. My oh. uncle Google. And if you ask him anything, he'll tell you the answer to anything. So if you ask Uncle Google, um, what is the oldest permanent settlement west of the Mississippi River? It says St. Genevieve. Now, you might get a little confused with that because there are some small um, like trading, posts. trading posts that have been inhabited on and off since maybe a little bit before 1735. That's not technically a settlement. St. Genevieve has been a town since 1735. So there's a difference there. Now, Spain was in Mexico, but that's not part of the United States. So. Well, is that west of the Mississippi River? Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. But as far as United States goes, right. St. Jimmy wins. Right. We just got word that the rocket launch has been postponed. <laughs> and the reason for that is that there is leaks in the fuel tank, I believe, which is a very valid reason. Yeah. <laughs> now, when I heard about this, I noticed that some people were saying, Oh, how come 50 years ago they were able to get Apollo up in a space and now all this time later we can't even get a rocket up? Well, it wasn't as foolproof and as seamless as it sounds. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Apollo 11 was the first one where man walked on the moon. Well, even before Apollo, there was a Gemini and the Mercury um missions mm -hmm. before they even went to the moon so that was all right. the testing and stuff and yes this is out of our time period but it's still really cool it's his still history cool. in america <laughs> uh the, the great space mm -hmm. race of the late 50s and the 60s right. it, it's really fascinating right and even in 1865 earth to the moon written by jules burns burn burns whatever um, <laughs> You can see in this picture here, it's a giant bullet. There's a man standing on top of it, and they got American flags on it, and they plan to shoot it to the moon. 
So people have been daydreaming about going to the moon since our time. But it is a bummer that and earlier. the Artemis didn't go off this morning. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was looking forward to see that because it's just, it's really neat. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine if somebody from our time period or, you know, Galileo who discovered the planets, you know, could witness some right. stuff that we have today, like, right. you know, the, the, the massive rockets and stuff. It would just be you know, it's funny. amazing. It's funny in the 1860s, some guy drew up an illustration of being shot in a giant bullet yeah. up to the moon. Yeah. That's kind of what a rocket is, ain't it? It's a giant basically. controlled bullet. <laughs> That's basically what it is. That sends you straight up. Hmm. He was on or something. I believe the word they used in that book was projectile, but still a bullet. Yeah. yeah. Missile could be called a projectile, I suppose. Yeah. It's yeah. a very violent space shuttle. <laughs> so it's really incredible how people have been daydreaming about space since our time, before our time, oh, yeah. our great 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 grandpappy's time. Way before our time. Mm -hmm. That's just these are just some of the things that, you know, I found around our time period and early American period since we've been here in America, but mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I'm sure it goes all the way back to the ancients. People, if they draw a picture of the moon, they're thinking about going to the moon. If they draw right. the stars, they're probably thinking about going to the stars. Or they're daydreaming about what it was like on the moon. Right. Him to the Moon by Lady Mary Worthy Montago. Thou silver delty of silent night, direct my footsteps through the woodland shade. Thus conscious witness of unknown delight, the lover's guardian, and the moose aid. By thy pale beams I solitary rove, to thee my tender grief confide, serenely sweet, you gild the silent grove, my friend, my goddess, and my guide. E thee, fair queen, from thy amazing height, the charms of young Endymion drew, veiled with the mantle of concealing night, with all thy greatness and thy coldness to Lady Mary Worthy Montagu. Well, I have another photo here mm. from the 1865 novel of Earth to Moon. You can see the projectile bullet <laughs> rocket here. They got a barrel of water and they got wooden crates of food. They have a gas uh, Pipe going to a gas light for gas lighting like they had in the Victorian that era. That sounds very safe. And then they even got plants that you can see here in the photo as well that they planned to put on the moon. Wow, they really had this thought out. Except they didn't have any fish bowls to put over their heads, so they, you know. <laughs> Scuba diving suits. But they had the right intentions. Ron, this is a disaster. We've run out of mustard. Oh, no. Hold on, I can scrape some on here. <laughs> We're at the scraping stage, There's guys. Some. I'm gonna run out of big pieces too. Hmm. Potatoes and tomatoes are both in the nightshade family. Hey, you told me that yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Learn something new every day when I'm with her. So we have cousins together on this table. She's so smart. It's a family reunion. Well, thank you. I have to research everything, and she just knows it. Yeah. Ron starts talking, and I'm like, yep, I knew that. <laughs> I don't know everything though. Not at all. Mm. You only stop learning when you die, basically. Don't forget everybody. Mm -hmm. September 10th is the uh, St. Genevieve Militia encampment mm -hmm. uh, that we're going to have here in St. Genevieve. Yes. It is a neat little event. Mm -hmm. I recommend you guys come. It's free. You'll get to see us. You'll get to see a bunch mm -hmm. of other reenactors. And uh, it'd be a great time. The weather is looking pretty great. At this point, it's looking like low 80s, so um, it'd be a great day to spend outside, and we'll be cooking for people, and yep. there'll be guns going off, and the By we, thrown. Ron means me. <laughs> well, it'd be her, me, and our good friend Michael, mm. and probably my dad. Oh, you're cooking with me? I'm going to do dishes. Oh, I'll, thank I got, you. I'll do camp thank cleanup. You. Somebody's got to clean up the hundreds of dishes that she always dirties yeah. for every little thing. Ron says I'm pretty destructive. <laughs> she is. So I'm going to make turnip greens with bacon. I'm going to make venison pie, maybe two of them, because i got to feed, what is it, 30 men? Yeah, about 30 of us. That's going to be at least two venison pies. I'm also going to make stewed tomatoes with sausages. 
I only want two pieces, by the way, of pie. You gotta ration it out! <laughs> okay, I might be making three pies. And then our friend Michael, he is going to be bringing lamb. Mm -hmm. And he's just gonna cook up a whole leg of lamb. So we have a good meal going on. It's either a leg or a rack. I don't remember what he said. Oh. Either way, I'll eat it. A lot of lamb. <laughs> yeah, he also told me last night that he tried out the lamb casserole receipt that we made um, a while back. And he said it was delish. Oh, yeah. And that really is amazing. What are you doing? <sighs> I wanted to taste some mustard. So okay, I, I did well, what I, I to can't do. eat that anymore. <laughs> There's a storm approaching. Yeah, it's getting pretty dark out there. Mm -hmm. There's a window behind you guys. This summer <laughs> has been very hot, very humid, and there's been a lot of storms. Now, I know it probably looks bright out these windows, but that's just the camera. Cameras, the ISO is automatic on some, so they're just for bright to dark. So it's obviously dark in here, so it's making us look lit up, mm -hmm. making the brighter outside be washed out and look like it's daylight, but it's pretty dark outside right now. It is. So when we're done with these, we're probably gonna wrap it up. <laughs> I'm almost done. But I had a very good birthday. Thank you everybody who wished me happy birthday. Mm -hmm. It was very enjoyable. Yeah. Yep, thank you guys. <clears throat> yeah, thank you. Flies keep on landing on my flies water. I love the crunchy. Dang! Oh, he's back. Well, you gotta hold it like this to where it's ready. You see him. Maybe right there. You guys see him on there. <laughs> <laughs> you did not get him. I watched him fly away. It's remarkable how fast they are. <laughs> These tomatoes are good. They are. All I really need is just fried potatoes and tomatoes, and I got a meal. Ron, where did our curly fries go? I don't know. You ate them all at the other, at the end of your show. Oh, yeah. yeah. I did, didn't I? Ron, where did all our mustard go? In my belly. Um. <laughs> I love mustard. Oh, yeah, we love mustard. We're mustard people. If you That's that, thunder. If you think that was gross, please don't be a wimpy. It's not that gross. <laughs> if you think that's gross, you should see Ron after he drinks milk. <laughs> okay, guys, we're going to head on out. I hear thunder in the background, yeah. and we are out of oh, mustard. Oh, lightning, too. I've seen oh, great. Bad. We're out of mustard, and that means it's time for us to go. So we're going to head out of here. <laughs> mm-hmm. Until next week, thank you guys for joining us. Take care. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.